guys look at a solar installation and and they say as long as as long as i've got a 16 mil cable coming down from my solar panels and it is i have a spike in the ground because that's what i hear when guys speak to me and they ask questions around earthing they kind of go um so i should just put in a 16 mil cable and a spike in the ground and and bond that to earth and everybody's happy that immediately tells me that that the guy that I'm busy talking to doesn't understand doesn't understand the principles and they're not applying my daughter's still at school and the principal at school normally pauses the mo uh, pauses the meetings and he goes okay guys we now have to activate I want you to focus on the front part of your brain. We are going to activate it. We are now moving into, into a thinking zone. So what I want you to do is just kind of stop thinking, worrying about standards and, and what you are supposed to do and just listen to the story. And if you listen to the story, all the other things are going to kind of fall in place. Now, in, in a normal installation, we have the transformer there. The power runs down. We have our loads on this side. We have our inverter, our grid tile inverter, solar system loads on this side. Extremely, extremely simplified. The, the transformer when they do the installation, so to, to have a look at the earthing and bonding and whether one spike or two spikes are enough, I'm going to kind of just take this side of the story away. So I wanted to draw that in so that you guys can get a picture of what's happening in the rest of the board. What happens when, and maybe the green is not going to be uh, bright enough, so maybe I should just stick to blue. Let's see if blue is okay. When a transformer is manufactured, they allocate a KA rating to the transformer. And the KA rating of the transformer tells the guys what the fault current is that is going to be discharged from this transformer in the event of a fault. Now, what these guys do is they know what the fault current value is so they then try and determine what size cable they should use to be able to handle that fault current over a specific period of time. Now, when, when you push a lot of current through a cable, it eats up. So what these guys said was, okay, let's choose the right size cable for the amount of fault current related to that transformer. And then they said, okay, the next thing we have to do is we've got to build an earth map. Now, contrary to popular belief, not everybody understands what an earth map is. Earth map sounds amazing. Most of us think that an earth map is a crow's foot. So a crow's foot is, I've, I've heard guys bragging about the earth map, uh, and then it's just a crow's foot. So a crow's foot is just, Three pieces of copper with an earth spike there and an earth spike there and an earth spike there. So you've got three spikes knocked into the ground. Um, and then from here, it kind of goes to where, whatever item or device it is you want to, you want to have earth. So that's kind of a, a crow's foot or a hen's foot or whatever you want to call it. Lots of uh, different names for this type of earthing system. But a earth mat is, is an arrangement. It's usually a grid. Usually a grid of copper wire. And at each one of these points, you have an earth spike going into the ground. The copper wire or the net, if I want to call it that, is, is welded together. And each one of those points have a spike connected to it. These, these arrangements are created bearing in mind what the fault current value is 
coming from the transformer. Now, the way they calculate it, or the only way that they can calculate it, is by understanding what the soil resistivity values are. So you've got a guy coming with a faller potential, the Schlumberg or the Venner method that Anthony just mentioned, and they come to where they want to build the substation or where they need to put the earth mat in, and they measure the soil resistivity values, and that tells them how big this thing has to be in order to dissipate the amount of fault current coming from the transformer in the event of a fault condition. Okay, so we've got that covered. Okay, A, sorted. I trust you guys are happy with that. So now, it turns out that lightning, I'm going to try and be a little artistic, Turns out that lightning has a Ka value as well. So when your building is struck by lightning, isn't the same argument going to follow? You kind of need to be able to get rid of what is dished out over here to whatever it is you've done in the ground over here. So one or two earth spikes might not be enough because the fault current from the lightning strike might be more than what the cable can handle, in which case we see accidents where the cable has exploded, uh, ripped plaster off the walls, um, where you see real damage in electrical installations in a building. So the KA from a lightning strike is the same thing. In South Africa, if you speak to, maybe I shouldn't be mentioning names. So let's just try and keep it neutral. Uh, maybe Kenneth would be able to confirm that. Apparently, the strongest lightning strike in South Africa would be would be in the region of about 16 ka. Oh, we've got quite a few guys that are, are lightning specialists and, and they would be able to confirm that. So, so you're sitting at between 16 and 20 ka. That's the max in South Africa. Maybe with the way weather changes and where weather conditions are going, maybe it's going to be increased. But essentially that is what you are trying to get rid of if you're protecting against lightning. Now, Turns out, our inverter has a Ka value too, and if we have a battery bank, the batteries have a Ka value as well. So whether we are protecting there, whether we are protecting here or whether we are protecting here is determined by what it is you are trying to protect. So when, when we earth with a, with a 16 millimeter cable, what are we protecting against? Are we expecting a direct lightning strike? So if we are expecting a direct lightning strike, according to, yes, I think it's, it's uh, SAN 62305, 60325-62305-3. It says, if you are fitting a lightning protection system and you are expecting a direct lightning strike, you will have two down conductors. Oh, my hat. Okay, guys, so we've got the solar system here. Um, that is connected there. Uh, I know it's, it doesn't look right, but, but you guys are all sparkies, you understand. If you don't understand, phone me afterwards. I'll explain it again. Um, so, that part's being earthed. 
here you've got to decide at what it is you are trying to achieve. Are you just trying to, are you just trying to bond? Are you just trying to bond your solar panels to the rest of your installation? And and then you have some earth spikes, uh, some earth spikes over there. Or in, in other words, are you expecting the fault current to come from the battery and the inverter? Or are you expecting the fault current to come from the panels? And that is then just bonded to the rest of your installation. How you do this and what you decide to do is determined by by you and by what you want to achieve. So if, if it's lightning you're expecting to protect the installation against, if that is our that is our house roof, this standard says you have to have at least two down conductors. Wow, guys, this really steps up the game. So that means you now need to to change your, your earthing arrangement because your down conductors, you now need two down conductors. I don't ever hear guys on social media talk about, talk about this. It's always just a 16 millimeter conductor and, and a couple of earth spikes. So I think it's, it's important to understand what it is we are trying to achieve and what it is we are trying to protect against. If it's, if it's a direct strike, you want to be able to handle, you want your conductors that you're using to be able to handle the mechanical and electrical force of the lightning strike. So if it's the mechanical and electrical impact of a lightning strike, then this is not necessarily just going to be a 16 mil conductor because that might not be the right solution for the job. This standard over here also specifies different types of earthing arrangements. It's either isolated or bonded. Guys, my time is just about up. I urge you to start reading your standards, start trying to understand what it is you want to do and, and how it is you want to protect your installation. Um, and Anthony, that kind of brings me to the, uh, I see Gary Thorison. Thanks, Gary. Gary said it's a 10 KA. The highest recorded lightning strike strength me measured in Cape Town was 198 KA. No, man. That kind of throws it out of the ballpark. Anyway. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. And uh, that is, yeah, Carl, that is before you close off completely, well done. Thanks. Um, exactly, exactly the principle that when I, when when I said that it's a bit difficult to say what your resistance should be and what your conductor should be is exactly the principle that you've basically put in picture format for everybody at the moment is. You have to determine the purpose of what you're earthing for. Yes. And I don't think too many people determine that. Nobody. Nobody determines that. Um, and the discussion is always, I want a specific resistance value. I want a specific this. When they don't look at the methodology around the protection. Yes. So I want to thank you. It's very insightful. It, it does add depth to our discussions. Um, and it was, it was really valuable having you here.